Invitations are an amazing product to sell online, whether you're selling it as a physical product or a digital product. Invitations are always needed all year round, so they're always in high demand. It's no secret that my favorite graphic design tool to use to create these types of products is Canva. So today I'm gonna to be showing you step-by-step -step how to create an invitation inside of Canva, whether you're creating the invitation design as a product to sell or just for your own personal use. And real quick, before we dive in, if you're wanting to sell digital products online, but you feel like you need some guidance, you feel like you could use some strategy to get sales rolling in quick, then I've got just the thing for you. It's my deep dive digital product masterclass. It's about 45 minutes long and goes through the four crucial steps that you'll need to take to start and grow a profitable digital products business. It's the training I wish I'd had when I first started. So I've got that linked in the description box below. Again, totally free for you to watch on demand. You can click that link and hop over to watch that right when you're done watching this video to make sure you get started your digital products business off on the right foot. Okay, so before we ever even jump into Canva to start designing, there's a really important first step that comes before that, and that is product research. Now, if you're creating this just for your own use, then you can skip this step. You know what you want. You can design it however you like. But if you're creating products to sell, it's important to know what types of invitations are selling well, the style that's currently selling well. You want to know what's trending and in demand to ensure that you're creating a product that's going to fly off the shelves. So my favorite way to do this is just to start searching on a platform like Etsy and looking at those best-selling listings that are ranking on the first and second page of search results and looking to see what's included in those invitation listings. Are the listings that are doing well only for single invitations or are they bundles that include extra cards like an RSVP card or a direction card? What styles are those invitations in? What color schemes are they using? What font styles are doing really well? So I'm looking at the listings on Etsy to get some clues for what's doing well and start to think about how I could put my own twist on it. But I also like to use some third party tools as well. Two of my favorite being the Canva Trends page and the Creative Market Trends page. Both Canva and Creative Market put out design trends reports for each year to tell us creators what is up and coming in terms of graphic design trends. These are all really great ways to get clues of how to create your design ahead of time so you don't put in all this effort and then list it in your shop only to hear crickets. So once I've done my research, I know what size is typically selling best, then I can go ahead and hop onto Canva and start creating. So when you're in Canva, you'll come over to the left side where it says create and you'll want to choose what size you want to create your design in. Right now, hopefully you've done the research to know what size you want your main invitation in. A lot of them come in five by seven, but you can create it in whatever size you want. You can use any of Canva's preset sizes or just click where it says custom size, change the units to inches and put in what you want. For this, I'm going to do a five by seven and click create new design. So here's my five by seven canvas. And before I even start creating on this, I want to go ahead and add a couple of pages because let's say I want to sell this invitation with a smaller card that could serve as an RSVP card and one that could be a directions card. So I'm going to come down here where it says add page and click this little drop down arrow, choose more, and I can choose custom size because I want this to be different than my five by seven. I want these extra cards to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to change this to inches again, and I think I'll do a five by three and a half inch card, create new page. And there's my extra little card. Since I want two of these, I'm just going to click this duplicate page button right here with the plus sign to get give myself another one. So here I've got my three different canvases I'm working on all within this same project. So from here, you'll just go ahead and start designing your invitation to look like whatever you want it to. Hopefully you've done the research now to know what styles, color schemes, fonts you're going for. For this demo, I'm just gonna stick with a minimalist aesthetic. So I'm gonna start with just adding some text. I'm gonna come over here to the left where it says text and click to add a text box. Now remember, this is gonna be a template for the person who's purchasing this invitation to use. So I'm just putting some placeholder text here, like the names, and they will come in and change this around to whatever wording they want. I wanna choose some really Really beautiful fonts here. So I'm going to come up to the top where it says font. This pulls over the entire library of fonts that I can choose from. Now you want to make sure if you're going to be offering this as a Canva template for someone to come in and edit, you don't want to choose any fonts that are pro fonts. You can tell the ones that are pro because they'll have this little crown symbol beside them. That means that anyone who does not have a Canva pro account will not be able to access those fonts. So in my opinion, when you're selling Canva templates, it's just easier and better to stick with free fonts.
fonts and elements so that you ensure whoever's purchasing this from you is not gonna get frustrated if they don't have a Canva Pro account. But there are a lot of beautiful free Canva fonts, so it shouldn't be too hard to find one that you like. You can always add any effects that you want to your font as well using this top toolbar, like if I wanted to make this bold or choose any effects from the effects menu right now. Again, I'm just gonna keep this simple. Remember, you can always resize things by clicking the corner of your text box and dragging it. Now I'm just gonna continue adding text here to fill this invitation out. Now one quick note here, when you're working on designing this, that I like to do is just to duplicate text. I know I wanna use these two fonts as my main font. So let's say I wanna add another line here that's in this sort of scripty handwritten font. Instead of coming over and clicking add a text box again, I'm just gonna select this one and click the little duplicate button that comes up when it's selected. That gives me a duplicate of it. So it's already in the font I want. And then I can just select to highlight and reword this for the next line. Another note here is you may want to alter the amount of space that's showing if you have multiple lines together like this one. I want to decrease the amount of space here in between these lines. So while I have this text selected, I can come up to the top where it says advanced settings. It's this little T with the arrows. If I click on that, I have letter spacing and line spacing. So I can adjust either of those. For this one, I'm specifically looking at line spacing and I'm gonna use this slider to decrease, move it to the left, which takes away the space in between the lines. That looks a lot better to me and I'm gonna continue playing around with the sizing of this until I'm happy with the way this looks. Now I'm working on this date and time section. I've seen this format do really well on some of the imitations I was researching. So this is where I'm having the day of the week, the date and the time. I'm gonna put some little lines in between here, but I'm making these a little bit small and making sure that this one with multiple lines is centered. Whenever you're working in Canva and wondering about alignment, if you're trying to center something to the page, as you drag it around, you'll see these different pinkish purple lines appear. Some of them are dotted, but when you're in the center of the page itself, you'll see this solid color pink and purple line going straight up the middle. That tells you that that piece of text or whatever you're dragging is directly in the center there. So I'm gonna keep this middle one centered and then drag these to be equal spacing apart from the middle. So I can see that both of these, as I'm dragging this text around, when I snap it here, it's showing that the Saturday and the 2 p.m. are equal distance away from the middle, showing 0.74. Now I wanna add some vertical lines in between these. So I can either come over to the element section here on the left and search for line, click over to shapes or graphics and find the one I want. Or when I'm on the canvas, I can just do a keyboard shortcut, which is just the L key. And when I enter that, it'll automatically put a line here. Now this is a little too thick. I'm going to come up to the top floating toolbar where it says stroke style and bring this stroke weight down to the left to make this line thinner. And then I'm going to use this little rotate button underneath to turn this vertical. I can click and drag this to move it where I want. Now this line is still a little bit long, so I'm gonna click the end and drag it down while holding shift. That ensures that it stays directly vertical and doesn't move the angle at all. And then I can continue dragging this into place. I wanna make sure that this is directly in the center between my Saturday and my March 13th text. So right there, it snaps into place and I can see that's centered. Now I wanna duplicate this line to put it right here again. So I wanna just, with this selected, click duplicate. That gives me a second line and I'm gonna drag this over and again, drag this until it is centered between the text. I can continue editing this if I feel like it's not quite right. Like I might want to make these lines a little bit shorter still, just making sure that I'm matching them with whatever changes I'm putting into place. So here's our final invitation design. This is again, super minimalist. You can always add graphic elements if you want by coming to the left-hand side and searching in the search bar for what you want. So if you wanted like, let's say a flower, you can type that in and click over to graphics and then add anything that you might want from there to your canvas to continue working with. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it simple. And next we're gonna work on this RSVP card. Now, before we move on to the next design, these invitations can be sold either as a digital product in the format of a Canva a template that someone could, like I mentioned before, hop into Canva and edit themselves before they print out. Or you could do the editing for them and sell it as an actual physical product. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do this is with print on demand. When you partner with a print on demand company, you're able to sell physical products without having to ever store inventory or package or ship any orders yourself. It's a way to keep it somewhat passive on your part still, but be able to offer both digital and physical. When it comes to choosing a print on demand provider, it's really important to 
look into which one would be the best fit for you. One that I love and highly recommend is Gelato. When you partner with Gelato as your print on demand provider, you can choose which products you want to sell from their huge library of product options. Everything from apparel to posters and wall art to cards to accessories, they've got it all. They partner with the world's leading brands to ensure all of their products are top quality and they offer a one-click integration with a lot of the top selling platforms like Etsy, Shopify, and Wix so you can easily sync your shop and get selling fast. Now talking specifically about invitations and cards, Gelato prints cards locally in 32 countries, which means your customers receive their orders faster while you save on shipping costs. They also place a high value on sustainability with all cards being printed on FSC certified paper and offered in multiple sizes, along with both standard and premium envelopes that can be positioned as an upsell or add-on. They offer premium finishes like a foil option that gives cards a shiny special touch, a great way to increase perceived value and boost profits. Gelato's prices are super competitive with their card prices being among the best in the industry. Another feature I love is Gelato's magic mockups. They allow you to showcase designs beautifully and are perfect for shop listings. They really do give you all the tools you need to be successful. And if you ever need help, their customer service is top notch. They offer 24 seven customer support and direct handling of refunds and issue resolution. So if you'd like to try out Gelato, you can use my link below to start for free and get 50% off your first purchase if placed within two days of creating your account. I'm so excited to hear what you think of it and want to thank Gelato for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay, so let's jump into designing these two extra cards so we can make this a bundle. The first one is going to be our RSVP card. So it's just the same design process. You can put whatever you want on this, but you want to just make sure it feels cohesive in the design. So you're going to use the same fonts and color schemes as you did in your original invitation to make it appear as a set. So I'm just going to put at the top of this one, RSVP. And then one thing you can do for an RSVP card is to actually include a QR code, which you can do right here inside of Canva. If you come to the left where it says apps and come to the search bar at the top, you can type in QR code. And this will give you different apps that you can use to generate your own unique QR code. So I'm just going to use this first one here and you would just enter the URL. So whatever website the person is using to plan their wedding or collect RSVPs, they can enter here. So if you're doing this for your own personal usage, this is where you would actually enter that URL. If you're offering this as a Canva template, you can enter a placeholder URL so that the person who's editing later can come in and customize this. So for this demo, for now, I'm just going to put canva.com. Obviously, this would be the URL that the person is using to collect RSVPs when they edit this later. You can also customize further by changing the background color, the foreground color, and the margin. I'm just going to leave it as is here and click generate code. And here it's put our QR code onto our design. So now when someone comes in later that's purchased this from you to edit this, they can simply click there, click edit at the top, and it'll pull over this sidebar where they can change out the URL. So now I'm just going to continue adding a little bit of text here underneath this QR code that just gives some instructions, something like scan the QR code above to respond by January 30th. And now I'm going to move down to make my wedding details card, same design process, keeping everything cohesive. Okay. So we've got all of our main design completed and now it's time to generate our Canva template link. So remember we're selling this as a Canva template, which means the person who purchases can come into their own Canva account and edit this. So what we need to do as a seller is to come up to the top, right? Where it says share and click where it says template link. Now you'll notice this does have a little crown symbol, which means that you have to have Canva pro to be able to generate this template link. If you don't have Canva Pro yet, I highly recommend it. I think it's pretty affordable for all of the extra features you get, and especially as a seller being able to generate this link. So I've got a free trial for 30 days of Canva Pro linked in the description box below in case you don't have it and you want to try it out. You can try it free for 30 days using that link, but we're going to click here on template link and then click where it says create template link. This is going to generate a unique link that we can share with our buyer that's going to allow them to open their own copy. This is really great because it means that no one is ever touching your original design and your original is never going to be altered or edited. When someone uses this link to open, they're going to have their own unique copy to edit in their account. So you're going to click here to copy this link and you're going to embed that on your actual deliverable. So the deliverable is the file that you're going to actually deliver to your customer when they purchase. This is one that I already had designed just to give you an idea of what it could look like. You can create it to look like whatever you want. Of course, you probably want your branding on the top. You want to make sure that it's clearly laid 
laid out and you want to give your buyer instructions on how to access and edit their Canva template. So anything you think they might need to know, you can put as text here on this document. But the main key here is that you need an area that says something along the lines of access your template here. Then wherever that text is, you can highlight in your document. And once you have it highlighted, there will be this little link button that pops up at the top. You can click on that and then right click to paste that template link that you just generated into this box. Once it's in there, you can click done and you've now hyperlinked your Canva template to this file. So this is the actual document that you're going to upload to your listing. So your next step here would be once that is linked and you're happy with the way this deliverable document looks is to again, come up to the top right where it says share and you're gonna download this by choosing the download option. And under file type, you're gonna wanna change this to a PDF standard should be fine here. And you just wanna make sure that this flattened PDF box is not checked. If it is checked, that's going to make this little link unclickable. Leave it unchecked. Make sure you're on the right page that you want to download and then click download. And once your buyer has purchased your listing, they'll be able to pull up this document that's going to be delivered to them. Click on the link that you embedded. And when they click on that, it'll say a template created by, it'll have your name here, was shared with you, start designing now. So they can click edit template and that brings them right into their own Canva account to be able to click through and edit this the way they want. Now I don't have time in this video to show how you would create your entire product listing. But just know on a platform like Etsy or Shopify, wherever you're listing this to your shop, that deliverable file is the only thing that you'll need to upload as long as your template is linked there. So I hope that was helpful for you. Remember, if you're wanting to start selling digital products, but just need some guidance, need some strategy on how to get those sales rolling in from the very beginning, then click that link below to hop over and watch my free deep dive digital product masterclass. Happy creating.